Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at other comprehensive income. Other comprehensive income is a topic that's covered on the CPA exam as well as in your accounting courses. If you are studying for the CPA exam, I strongly suggest you check out my website farhatlectures.com. I do not replace your existing accounting course, whether it's Becker, Roger or any other course. I can be an addition, a useful addition like a vitamin to your course because the, the reason is as I teach the material other courses they review it with you if you are studying for your CPA exam don't short change yourself my subscription is minimal for what you're gonna be getting and it's gonna help inc increase your score and understanding by 10 to 15 percent at least at least check out my website Farhat lectures if not for anything is just to check out the your university CPA exam how well is your university performing this tells you about the rigor of your accounting program if you're taking accounting courses please check out my website I do have many accounting courses supplemental material that's gonna help you connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so please like my YouTube and share them subscribe so you would receive notification when I upload and connect with me on Facebook and Instagram so what is other comprehensive income so comprehensive income represent what represent all changes all changes in equity during the period except those resulting from investment by owners and distribution by owners so comprehensive income include everything that affect equity except investment by owners and distribution by owners so the owners are out of the picture so the owners are not showing so the owners we basically just think of the owners as as out of the picture we don't like the owners comprehensive income don't like the owners anything to do with the owners investment by owners or distribution by owners they're not included so what's included in equity revenues gains expenses losses obviously revenues increase equity gains increase equity expenses reduces equity and losses reduces equity also what's going to be included in comprehensive income this is the new thing this is the new things gains and losses that do what that bypass gains and losses that bypass net income but affect stockholders equity so we're gonna look at new items new items new things that bypass net income but affect stockholders equity so what are those things I'm gonna list them for now explain them briefly but you will see them later on so they will appear later on for example this will appear in chapter 17 this will appear I don't know in what chapter then we have some pension adjustments it's gonna appear in chapter 20 okay and we're gonna have uh, the third taxes that's gonna appear here so many things that will appear here so so here's how it works we have net income this is what we learned earlier if you don't know how to prepare an income statement go back and view the prior session to because we talked about the income statement in depth in this chapter then once we are done with the income statement we add to the income statement something called comprehensive income what is comprehensive income comprehensive income include items such as unrealized gains and losses for available for sale securities so sometime we're gonna have investments and in available for sale securities. so we're gonna have investments so let's talk about how this comes into play we're gonna have investments and those investments will be qual will be treated as available for sale a F S available for sale those available for sale securities we might have gains on them or losses anytime we have gain or losses those gain or losses don't go on the income statement we can't put them on the income statement where do we put them they are considered other comprehensive income they are treated as part of the other comprehensive income and other comprehensive income I'm just gonna abbreviate it's O C I other comprehensive income so those items are included in OCI if we have gains that's gonna increase equity if we have losses from those securities it's gonna reduce his equity we're gonna have translation gains and losses on foreign currency we mentioned this briefly earlier when a company operates overseas so if it's a US company operating in Europe or US company operating in Japan or a US company operating in South America what's gonna happen they're gonna translate their financial gains and losses and sometimes they're gonna have gains translate their currency 
into US dollars. Sometimes they're gonna have gains, sometimes they're gonna have losses. The gain and the losses don't go on the income statement, don't go on the income statement. They go on OCI. So they do increase or decrease equity. They either increase or decrease equity, but they don't affect net income. They bypass the income statement. Plus other items. Those other items, one of them is pension adjustments. That's that's the only thing I can think of right now. There's a few other things, okay? So comprehensive income is things that we need to, that affect equity, but doesn't affect net income. So we put them in this statement that's called, or in this item called other comprehensive income. Once again, those are items that bypass, that bypass, uh, bypass net income, but affect equity, okay? So they're not income statement accounts. Gains and losses that bypass net income but affect stockholders' equity are referred to as the other comprehensive income, OCI, other comprehensive income. Companies must display the components of other comprehensive income in two ways. So how do we show other comprehensive income as a company? Because we need to show it. How do we show it? We have two ways to show it. So GAP gives us, whoops, GAP gives us two ways to show it. We could either show it as a single continuous statement, so one, this is called a one statement approach, or two separate but consecutive statements of net income and other comprehensive income. And the best way to do is to look at an example. This is one statement approach. Notice this is, this is, this is the income statement right here. Then after the income statement, here we have other comprehensive income, unrealized holding gain. We have some gains and they are reported net of tax, by the way, of 30,000. So comprehensive income is net income plus this 30,000. So comprehensive income is net income plus items that bypass net income. What, what is the advantage of the one step, one statement approach? It does not require the creation of a new financial statement. The disadvantage, it, it buries net income as a subtotal because net income is important. Now net income in the middle, you want it to be at the end because net income is also called the bottom line. So if it's really called the bottom line, it should be the last number. So this is the disadvantage of the one statement approach, or we could have two statement, one statement, two statement. So we could prepare net income and show it as net income, then prepare the, compreh uh, the comprehensive income statement and the comprehensive income statement will start with net income because it includes everything, revenues, expenses, gains, and losses. Then we'll add to it the gain. Here we have a gain, holding gain. Okay. Another statement, it's something called statement of stockholders equity, report the changes in stockholders equity and account for total equity for the period. Okay. Following items are disclosed in the statement. So what should show in the stockholders equity, the issuance of share and the distribution of dividend to owners, because it's, it affects equity, affects stockholders equity, reconciliation of the carrying amount of each component from the beginning till the end of the period. So we need to show the beginning balances and the ending balances of the accounts that affect equity. So let's take a look at stockholders equity. Notice here, this is the name of the company, the name of the statement and the date. So we have a column for common stock, column for other accumulated other comprehensive income, column for retained earning and a total. So let's start with the total, with, with the beginning balance. The beginning balance of retained earning was 50, the beginning balance of other comprehensive income 60, and the beginning balance of common stock is 300. Other comprehensive income, uh, well, then we what we did is we had a net income, net income effect, effect retained earning, so net income went up, and we didn't have dividends, so retained earning, beginning balance plus net income gives us the ending balance of 160. So this is the beginning balance, and this is the ending balance. Comprehensive income, Accumulated other comprehensive income was 60. In this period, we had 30, so the total is 90. Common stock, 300 and 300, there was no change. Basically, we add we add a cross to see the total. Then the ending balance is 550, which is 410 plus 110 plus 30 is 550. So this is a statement of stockholders' equity, showing the beginning balances as well as the ending balances, okay? Now, the other thing I want you to basically remember that accumulated other comprehensive income. So other comprehensive income is 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 where we park things, but 
it's a cumulative so we have an accumulated other comprehensive income it was 60 now it was 30 so accumulated other comprehensive income is an equity account it's an equity and if it's an equity account it means it goes on the balance sheet so other comprehensive income it goes on the balance sheet under stockholders equity we have common stock we have retained earning and we have accumulated other comprehensive income accumulated means it's it's a continuous continuous it's a continuous figure okay so accumulated other comprehensive income we don't close it from year to year the balance stays and it accumulate so we show the accumulated effect on the balance sheet this is what we mean by accumulated other comprehensive income again at the end of this recording i'm going to invite you again to check out my website farhatlectures.com and once again, I don't replace your, your CPA prep courses. I wish I can. I can do it. But I can be that additional vitamin, that supplemental tool that's going to help you propel to pass the exam. Invest in your career. The CPA exam is a lifetime investment. It's 30 to 40 years. Don't shortchange yourself. And if you have any doubt, and check out my LinkedIn recommendation to see how other students use my website for their benefit to pass the exam. Good luck. Stay safe and study hard.